This is a Piece of the Attraction podcast with leading dating and attraction expert for men, Kezia Noble. Gloves off conversations, exchanges, debates and confessions that dish up the insights and serve the solutions. Now over to the lady herself. Welcome to a Piece of the Attraction podcast. For over a decade, my team and I have been helping men from across the globe enhance their lifestyles, improve their attraction skills, and maximize their confidence and potential in order to be their best and most authentic selves. The content here is unfiltered, and hopefully in this over-filtered era, we all currently inhabit our straight-talking advice, our honest confessions and insights, will cut through all the niceties and serve to help you action better choices. This is a Piece of the Attraction podcast. Remember, you can find and download all the episodes on Stitcher, Overcast, Spotify and iTunes. Today's guest on a Piece of the Attraction podcast is Les, and he's one of the newest additions to my team. Today we'll be discussing the components of a successful interaction, and hopefully by the end of this show, you will have a better understanding of how you can copy and paste that unforgettable interaction you had again and again. Hello, Les. Hi, Kezia. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Man after my own heart, you're all about micro detail. I'm massive on micro detail, massive on it. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Um, however, we were discussing a little bit before the podcast about how you feel that internal changes that we make shift our realities, where I am very much from the school of thought that our actions shape our beliefs. Are we going to conflict it? Um, I think I, I agree with you on to a certain extent, but for the most part, I believe that, yeah, so obviously our external reality, the reference experiences that we get, will shape our internal reality and then according to how our internal reality works that'll reflect our action in our actions and that'll determine the external reality so it's like a positive feedback loop you need one to feel the other and the other to feel the other it's not black or white you know mm-hmm. that's from that's how i think about it okay yeah. i i see what you mean i mean you know on the seven day mastery program we attack approach anxiety social anxiety limiting beliefs from all different angles. So it's always good to have somebody who's, no, no, it's all about the internal shift, and then another person say, you know, it's the external, and then combine the two to get maximum results. Now, you have something called uh, the four components of a successful interaction. Mm. And a lot of the students have said that this has really, really helped them to identify um, the mistakes that they make in past interactions, but also it helps them to identify the positives, the positive um, things that they did in an interaction. Because as I said in the introduction, we kind of like encase our positive interactions with people in magic. Like we say, oh, it was a vibe, we just clicked. And that doesn't really help us then go and copy and paste that interaction. So this four components of a successful interaction really takes a look at the micro detail of, a, of an interaction so that you can become aware of it. So. So let's start off with the first one. What is that? That's value. Value, value, right. So let's get stuck into that. Cool. So the way I like to look at value, I like to break it down into both the physical and the verbal. Obviously, the majority of what is conveyed in an interaction is is via your subcommunication, which Mm -hmm. is via your body language, your body language, your eye contact, and your vocal tonality. They call it the 55 38 7 rule. So, seven, for, so the 50, 55 38 7 rule. Yeah. Right. So Tell 55% me about. of what is communicated is via your actual body language. Non verbal communication. So, like your how your posture and your stance mm-hmm. and things of that nature. 38 is your para language. So, how you actually sound. Mm-hmm. And then less than 7% is actually what you say. Really? Yeah. So, it's, wow. it's massively important because when you speak to especially a woman, she's not necessarily going to remember what you say she's going to remember the feelings surrounding that and how and you make her feel exactly and how you make her feel is going to be dictated by your body language the value of an abundancy mindset and how to create one tell me about that so value of abundancy mindset 
basically going into an interaction, knowing that you have abundance, uh, will obviously influence your actions. You know, so if you have uh, certain other options in terms of women that you're seeing, then you're it will reflect. I know it does reflect massively. Yeah, and we and just get it, women. We just know that that guy has other options. We are not yeah. his only bet. A hundred percent. And due to the paradoxical nature of social interaction, because you want it less, she's gonna want you more. You know, it's like it's like the saying they say: the hungry don't get fed. It's exactly the same with with women. If you're desperate for sex women are not going to want to give it to you. However, if you have it, they're going to want to give it to you more. It's a, it's a bizarre thing. It's, and women can pick up on this. Men so can well. pick up on it too. They can. Men can smell desperation on a woman. Mm. Even if she's beautiful, if she's desperate, yeah. if she's too thirsty, you say hungry, I always say thirsty, then the, then the guy backs off. Mm. There's something wrong. It's damaged goods. There's something wrong there because nobody else wants her. I would I would tend to slightly disagree with you on that. It depends oh. on, on it depends on the guy. So if he's also desperate, then like attracts like. Oh. Right. Know? Okay. Yeah. So if yeah. you if you yes. have a guy who who knows what he wants, especially people who actually have abundance in women, and they they know what type of woman they want, they've been through the girls who are needy, the girls who want them too much, and they know what comes with that. You know the the too many texts in the morning. If you get in a fight, then she may go and do something to sort of get a reaction out of you. So, so guys who have that experience with women are able to pick up on those cues. And then as for me, I know, especially as, as soon as I see that certain level of insecurity or desperation, I just ghost. Have you been out of a psycho girl? Psycho bitch? Um, <laughs> no, not... There's degrees of it. I mean, did you get... Have you ever had the girl texting too much in the morning? Uh, yes, and yeah, yeah, I have. Um, but I mean, have you ever made that mistake? Come of on, course, oh, uh, of shit. course. Yeah. Got thirsty. Um, <laughs> Has a glass course. of water when I said yeah. that. <laughs> Bad memories. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think one of the biggest reasons people get into this is because they they come from a place of where they don't have any abundance. You know, they don't have women, so they tend to fall into that trap of of acting needy. Um, it's very hard. It's it's like when you like somebody, and we've all been there. We've really liked someone like. Oh God, you, to control yourself from texting them, it is, it is very difficult. I've, I've yeah. got it down to a T now, I just do not text men. Mm. Unless I'm in a relationship, I will not text them first. I will not. It's just a simple rule. If he mm. wants me, he texts me. Okay, we're not here to help women today, yeah. but um, I, I probably go to an extreme. I'm like really old fashioned in that sense. So no, no, guy has to do all the work, all the work. Yeah. There is a balance, but um, I just feel that as soon as you start getting those texts going, hey, how are you and stuff, a little bit too regularly, I know that that can frighten off both sexes. And it's such a small thing, but the other, the other person's just starting to think, does this person have other options? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be honest, I hate sitting on my phone texting like back to the, the common text, like, hi, how are you going? I'm just like, oh, I don't have time for that, you know? <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather just use texting to meet, to meet up on dates or arrange the meeting. I understand there's like that maintenance that you need. Yeah, occasionally like hey how are you feeling how's your day going like occasionally but to be honest nowadays i can't be asked so i actually get turned off when i get that message it's almost like reverse now i see how so I'm girls doing feel right so i'm doing something right then yeah you are of course because um <laughs> yes. get in there. I, like as much as as we say to guys make give the girl the gift of the chase that's what girls want they want to work for you mm. they all want it to be easy it's, a, it's exactly the same for, for girls to guys. They must also give guys the gift of the chase. You know, yeah, it's that fine line. Yes, yeah. it's, a, it's like that fine line in video games where it mustn't be too easy, but it mustn't be too hard. So you have to be playing in that perfect ballpark figure where you keep someone's attention, but you also make them really work for it. So I feel like I've got the perspective on the other, from the other side now. Now I see it from a girl's perspective, someone who has a lot of options, mm -hmm. When you get that text, like, hey, how are you? I'm like, oh, God, like, I don't want to answer this, you know, because now I have to spend time thinking about how my day was, and it's just a mission, you know? I'd rather not. First world problems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. What if someone just doesn't have those options, though? Okay, well, obviously, you have to, you have to fake it till you make it. Yeah, I'm a strong believer in that. And what we're going to go through today is obviously one of the conversational frameworks that you can use in an interaction okay. to obviously get those positive reference experiences. Like we spoke about before, you need, you need those positive reference experiences to get the epiphanies, to change your internal reality, to, to shape what you actually 
believe what you can get, you know, because I can say to one of the students, you know, like you can go onto the street, meet a girl, have an awesome interaction, take her out on a date and things can stem from that. But until he does it, bef until he does it for himself, he's not actually going to believe that, you know, he's yeah. not actually going to hundred percent believe that and a hundred percent act with the full knowledge Conviction. that it's going to happen. Yeah. It's like that, the knowledge of that must be as strong as gravity. You know, he must 100% believe that if he goes and, and approaches that woman, something amazing can happen. Okay. You know? Now, you mentioned conversational techniques. Mm. Yeah, so conversational frameworks. Um, this is all part of the value. Yeah. The so, first component. Yeah. So what I'm going to give to you now are just a few little techniques that I like to use in a conversation to spike emotions. And these are massively important because what they do apart from disqualification itself, is that they indirectly disqualify the end point, which is sex, which is massive because it's missing from most guys' game. Oh, wow, this sounds point. super interesting. Right, yeah. notepads and pens, guys, at the ready. Yeah, so basically what's missing from most guys' game is the fact that they always pull, 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 mm -hmm. and they never push a little bit. They never take a step back. And like we said before, they never give the girl the gift of the chase. Because everyone falls into it. They, they see these Hollywood movies, they listen to women, and I do agree that you can learn a lot from women, but a lot of what women will tell you what they want, they don't actually want. So yeah, I've oh God, absolutely. I want, I, want, I want a nice guy, and then they friend zone him and go sleep with the boss that didn't text them back. Exactly, the guy That's with the I'm tattoos. That's why I'm here, guys, I'm here to, to, to give you the honest truth. Exactly, the guy with the tattoos and the leather jacket behind the, the wall at the music festival, you know? But then she'll not sleep with a friendly guy for like four or five days. And then she'll complain that there's no decent guys out there. I'm like, well, exactly. you're not fucking them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not giving them a chance. So how, okay, so yeah. um, how do you do that? The, you're saying it's all poor with guys. How can you, how do you push then? Okay, so there are a few things that I like to use. The first one is push-pull, obviously. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail. Push-pull, disqualification, qualification, uh, challenging and teasing mm -hmm. basically all things that that uh, are that actually happen naturally for someone who has a lot of value and abundance it was amazing because I, I coached a student once and often when I coach students I don't give them a lot of theory I see where they are mm -hmm. and then from where they are I build on their knowledge because just throwing theory at them is not going to help mm -hmm. and this guy had quite a lot of abundance with women and what I found was that he was actually doing all of these things 100% naturally. Right. And I hadn't said anything to him. And I was like, that's absolutely incredible that you're doing that. Because this is what I, I teach students. Yeah. That just because he had that sense of abundance, he was doing it naturally. Right. Okay. So uh, let's go on to the first thing, push-pull. So I'm sure a lot of viewers and listeners will know what push-pull is. So I love you, I hate you mentality. So mm -hmm. it's creating comfort, pulling her in, saying, you know... I really like the top that looks really nice on you but the shoes I'm not so sure about mm. you know and as I said before it, it, it indirectly disqualifies the end point which is sex you know you're making the end of the movie not known to her because no one wants to know what happened what's gonna happen at the end of the movie I have a variant of that and it's called mm. double-sided compliments so I'll say to guys say to a girl you know you give her the first of all you give her the compliment which should be vague but then the suggestion of how she can look even better should be detailed. Mm. So the compliment, the first part, has to be vague and it's the safety net. It softens the blow. So you say to her, oh, you look really nice. Nice. Yeah. But you know what? If you were wearing like black stilettos or whatever, it, you know, if the guy likes stripper shoes, whatever it is that he likes, I'd be all over you now. So you're saying, you're pretty, but you're not hot. You're pretty, but I don't want to fuck you yet. Yeah. And I think, I th I've always found that that's an incredibly powerful form of push-pull. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly what we've been speaking about. Just put, pushing them away a little bit so yeah. that they, they want to mm -hmm. get a little bit more. And women are the best at doing this. Is that the same as disqualification though? No, so What's the difference? It, it's, it's very similar. You see, one thing I don't want people to get confused about is that they must um, specifically segment all of these. And, they, and they often the guys who are very gamey think, okay, now I'm disqualifying her. Yeah. You know, now I'm going to qualify her. The now I'm going roadmap. to... Yeah. yeah, now I'm going to tease her now I'm going to challenge her yeah. now, and it's too much if you have that sense of playfulness that sense of teasiness when you challenge her on things it all indicates it's all coming from the same place you know conveying that sense of value 
and also abandons to the woman. Okay, so um, how would you disqualify? Is that the same then? Okay, as so, so disqualifying is basically, uh, to give you a definition, it's disqualifying the endpoint, which is sex. So it's making the endpoint unknown. And therefore, it makes it a lot more interesting for women. So a soft qualification, I'm sure you've heard, is like, you and I are not going to get along. I, I don't really like disqualification, it. Disqualification, you Disqualif mean. <laughs> oh, sorry, soft disqualification yeah, yeah, yeah. is like, you and I aren't going to get along. It's because of you do this. Or, you know, I don't like girls that walk the way you do. It's just very fun. It's playful. You've got to do it playfully. It's very important, yeah. guys. Like, if you say it like, you know, like you're very, very straightforward and very serious, that's an insult. And we yeah. don't want to encourage guys to insult women. Yeah. It's playful. It's always playful. Yeah. Um... I'm sure, you know, Jazzy, he says you have to go in with the frame of being like a horny puppy dog. You know, very playful. You're not taken too seriously, but you have that sexual intent as well. Mm. Um, and you'll be amazed with how much you can get away with if you're just playful. Yeah, oh God, yes, yeah. I know that. So a soft qual disqualification would be like you and I aren't going to get along. A very hard qualifica disqualification would be you and I are definitely not having sex tonight. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But you've already put that in there, sex. So it's already like triggered sex, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, it's good. Exactly. Good, good, good. What about qualification? So qualification is basically... I call this, by the way, negative validation and positive validation. Yeah. So qualification is basically just um, getting the girl to live up to your standards. So an uh, uh, example of this would be what do you do for fun, you know? soft qualifications before getting into the more harder qualifications so a very hard qualification is you know there's so much beauty around you know like this look at all these girls yeah there's so many of them but i'm looking for something a little bit different what what do you do this different you know something yes. like that okay yeah yeah so you're setting you're setting the tone exactly yeah. and it must come from a genuine place because um what you must do before you go out and speak to a woman, you must have a roadmap of what you want in a girl. Yes. You know? yeah. Say, I want a girl who is fun. I want a girl who has a sense of humor. I want a girl who is adventurous. And then when you go out, you're going to be naturally coming from that place where you'll say, you know, I really enjoy sports. I enjoy going out on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I enjoy having fun with friends. What do you enjoy, enjoy doing? And I'm, when you come from that place, she's going to be like... I've got to say something sporty now also. Because exactly. if I turn around and say, I just like to watch Netflix and binge on chocolate yeah that's what i hate though because that often happens when i'm speaking to younger girls i'm like what do you actually do for fun because often i use that as a bridge to create a date in the future so if she's like oh, i love riding through the park on a bike and i'm like oh that's actually quite cool i enjoy that as well and i can arrange so you go first then usually so yeah that often soften that softens the blow mm -hmm. if you're looking for a bridge into qualification one thing that i will say is that uh adjust the strength of the qualification to according to how interested she is because if i go up to a girl and she doesn't like me at all and i say what do you do for fun or tell me something interesting about you she's going to be like who the fuck are you like i don't need to mm. tell you however if she's shown some form of interest then she's going to actually want to live up to your standards do you think that um, the level of qualification, disqualification, depends also on what kind of woman you're talking to? So if it's a very alpha woman, yeah, how you can you push it further? A hundred percent. You know, this they love is, it, don't they? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. We love it, guys. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, so um, so it does vary. Then this it does vary on on the girl. Yeah. And just to what you made that point you made yeah. is is really interesting. You know. Um, adjusting the strength of these to the type of girl you know it comes into the fact of understanding that there's a dance of perceived value in an interaction mm -hmm. you know or a seduction if you will to to the end point and exactly like you say if you go up to a girl and she's a shy timid girl and you're like what makes you special i like fun girls blah, blah, blah. she's gonna be like oh this is too much however if it's like one of those really bitchy girls in a club, yeah. then you can say like, you know what, what else do you have going for you? you know, look at all these other girls who are just as pretty as you. I like girls who are fun. What makes you special? Then you're actually operating at her level and she's gonna be able to deal with that. And that's what's gonna differentiate between you and the other loser who comes up to her in the club, basically. Do you know what Pete does? Pete uses qualification on bitchy girls. It's really, really powerful. It's like he once approached this really hot girl, Russian girl, and she said to him, fuck off. First thing she said, fuck off. And he goes, oh, I love it. He goes, I hate nice girls. Yeah. He took the power away from her. 
He took yeah. that, when you qualify a bitch, you take away their power because you are disrupting the script. Mm. If she's a bitch to you, most guys will say, well, fuck you too, or they'll apologise for their very existence. When you qualify someone for something that they usually get punished for or disqualified for, it... Um, it 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 uh, confuses them almost. Yeah. They're like, what the fuck's this? Who's this guy? And it shows how confident the guy is. Yeah. And 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 Pete, as we know, he likes pretty difficult women, so he's being quite genuine there. But um, she just smiled. She was like, "What?" And he's like, "All oh, these girls are so nice. So I like really like you know yeah. some some of the challenge." And then she started laughing, and he's like, "No, no, no! no don't ruin it now. <laughs> don't start smiling and being fucking nice." Yeah. Literally, within a couple of seconds, he'd switched it around. By the way, Pete is the guy who is very kind enough to lend us his, um, his apartment for these podcasts, but he also runs the boot camps both in the UK and Vegas with Josie. So just clearing that up. Um, role play, what's that? So role play is basically creating a hypothetical future with you and the girl. Um, so if I was chatting to you in a bar and I'd been chatting to you for a while, and I wanted to create that you and her, you and me dynamic, you know, that sexual playful vibe with the you and me dynamic, then I'd use something like, like role play. I'd say, you know, I can imagine you in that black leather jacket or that black top, your long brown hair flowing on the back of my motorbike. As we ride across the desert, you can feel the cold wind in your face. It feels cool. And then we find this little oasis and it's got this beautiful little house on it. And then we farm there and live happily ever after. And the girl's like, Oh, that's so silly. You it's know? so cringe. It's yeah. It's so it's so funny, and it depends how you're doing it as well. Obviously, if you're joking around, yeah. Yeah, if you're joking around, then and it depends on the girl as well. Uh, I use that sparingly, to be honest, because like you said, it can be a little bit like, uh, but like we were speaking about before the podcast, it's very important that it's so absurd that it's not believable. Yeah. Otherwise, the girl's like, what, what the fuck? What are you talking about? So if it's completely crazy and adventurous, then it's fine. And you believe that that's part of the component of value? Um, it can convey value, yeah. Depending on how you how you'd actually do the role play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's misinterpretation? So misinterpretation is basically the ability to take the... or it, It's a tool that you can use to make the conversation sexual. So if the girl says something and you're at the point in the conversation where you want to create those little sexual spikes, you can say... What did you just say? Did you mean dot, dot, dot? And it'll be something sexual. And then she'll have to say, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. I actually meant that. And you're like, nah, stop trying to flirt with me here. I know what you're trying to do. And then it almost puts her on the back foot and she's like, oh, yeah, now I need to watch what I'm saying, you know. And, it, and like you said, it just makes the conversation a little bit more sexual. Those little spikes where you put her on the back foot. Another yeah. way that I believe, and as you know, value um, is... Um, it's linked to abundancy, the abundancy mindset. You can't be high value if you don't have an abundancy mindset or you don't have other options. So how can... Well, I've got a few ideas of how someone can put it in there, in the conversation, that they have other options without saying, hey, babe, I've got other options. One yeah. of them for me is like arranging the date. I always say to the guy, and guys hate doing this, but it really works, is I say, um, never say to her, are you free Monday? Because then she'll say, I've got yoga. Okay, you free Tuesday. No, I've got this. And you're already on that um, no ladder, that negative ladder going downwards, downwards, downwards. I always just say to guys, it's really hard to do, but just say, you know what? This, this next week, in fact, the week after, it's like just I'm flat out with stuff. Let's hook up when I get these two weeks done over with. And guys say to me, oh, no, I can't do that, Kezia, because I might lose. I'm like, no, 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 increases your value. She'll, she'll be less likely to flake on you because you've shown someone that has limited time. Every other guy's going, hey, babe, whenever's you know, a good time for you, I'll be there with a bunch of roses waiting. I'll cancel my plans. Thursday, don't worry, I had arrangements, cancelled, everything for you. I always say to guys, you just tell her how, you know, you, you show her how busy you are and she's yeah. much less likely to flake. No, 100%, I, I agree with that. Whenever I arrange a date, I never say, when are you free? I always say, these are the days I'm free. These are the days I'm free. What suits you? And then she'll say, okay, I can do Wednesday. And then I'm like, okay, fine. Perfect. Sometimes they send, uh, there's another uh, thing that I do. Um, and if, if, for instance, you say, I've got Tuesday and Wednesday free, she's like, oh shit, I've only got Thursday. Obviously, you can't then say, oh yes, actually, I do have Thursday free. Mm. But what you can do is go, oh shit, I've got um, 
I've got dinner on Thursday, but you know what? Might be a bit late, so you kind of like anti sell it, you know. Yeah. And you say, mm, We can meet up for a drink at nine, but it might be too late for you. You're almost like saying, Don't do it, it's yeah. reverse psychology. And then, funny so, enough, they go, Yeah, yeah, I don't mind doing that. I think low investment dates are good, also. We're going off topic a little bit, but low investment dates are really good, like going for dinner on a first date. Never, <laughs> never, ever, never, ever buy a girl dinner on the first date. You hear that, guys? Have Fuck you guys it. ever bought dinner on the first date? No. Have you? Yeah. So. Drink. Drink. Yeah, low investment. Yeah. See, these guys, these, guys are, these guys are just naturals who see our producers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't even need to buy the girl a drink. Like, I say, oh, no, no. It's no, too no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not saying, like, treat her like shit. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying if you go... If, if a if guy's you, not buying me a drink, I'm out. No, just listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying if you invite the girl... <laughs> ow, <I'm sorry. laughs> I'm no, gone. just listen. I'm just. saying if you invite the girl out... Okay then it is, I, I believe it is good manners. I'm not part of that hardcore mentality where it's like, no, don't That's cheat very it. Pick up politics, yeah, yeah, it's very like that. But what I think is extremely is extremely powerful is, in, is inviting a girl into your reality and not necessarily having to go on a stereotypical date, mm. you know? So you can say, you know what? I have a bit of free time. I have an hour between here and there. Um, I love going through Hyde Park and just walking around. Do you want to join me? And then you just invite her to come and spend time oh, no, with absolutely, you. Absolutely. Because yeah. then um, it's hundred percent that she's there for you. I did yeah. that with a guy once. This was years ago, before marriage, before babies, and um, he's famous. This guy, I've been out with a few famous guys. Um, he's he's quite famous, and you know he's very busy and he was touring and stuff like that. And he kept phoning me and said, "Let's meet." And I said, "Look, you know what? I can meet you in Hyde Park between two o'clock and four o'clock." He's like why and I'm walking my dogs at that time he said okay fine I'll come and walk the dogs with you and he literally came with me so when I had two dogs and he walked with with me with my dogs and was like this is my reality this is what I do and he was hooked after that yeah but it's, it's exactly the same in the reverse role invite the girl into your in your, to your oh, absolutely. reality you know so I know it sounds Fix bizarre it with your time but do buy her a drink no I'm not saying buy that her, or buy her a coffee or an ice cream in the, in the, in the park yeah That's yeah they sell 99p coffees at press. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Oh, obviously, shit. obviously, um, <laughs> goes over his coupons. Yeah, exactly. Or McDonald's. No, I'm joking. Obviously, if you invite a girl out by her, yeah. But I'm saying it's not a must. But not dinner. No, never, no. never fucking dinner ever, unless I use it as a rule. Unless I'm sleeping with a girl. Oh no, no, no. And God, she's, of course, um, no. But... I'm not gonna go off tangent now, but unless she's. We like you going off tangent. Unless no, she's really. behaved really well, then I'm not gonna like spend a lot of money on her. I often. A lot of the girls that I'm seeing treat me really well, or if I'm seeing one particular girl and she treats me really well, then I'll be like, you know what, you're so cool, let me take you out for dinner. But it's not, um, it's not at the initial stage of the, of the relationship because that sets completely the wrong frame where you're basically saying to a girl, you're the food guy. let me pay for you to spend time with you. You know, it's the food thing, guy. Ali yeah. says this, Ali's on the team, we did a podcast with him. He's like, I don't want to be the food guy. Because women, that. yeah, I know, I know um, a couple. They're married now, very, very happy. But she, she met him online, as everyone does now, which is so boring. And she said, "Oh, between she was Australian. She goes, oh, between you and me, Kezia, I was just hungry that night. I had nothing in the fridge. <laughs> so she went. The girl's loaded. The girl's got money. But she was like, oh, fuck it. And she, he was the food guy. But then she fell in love with him. It can work. Yeah. But you don't want to be the food guy. It's not. You're not setting the right framework. You know, Lisa. Mm. When you start going out with very attractive women, you realize that they've got a, a selection of men who do different things for them. So you've got the guy who buys her food, and he's <laughs> keeping her. He's she's keeping him on like that little thread where she's yeah, like, yeah. okay, you can come out with me here. We can go for dinner, and then he's gonna buy her dinner. She's got the guy who does shit for her. You know, she, yeah, yeah, if she, yeah. If she's I've had moving. those ones. Yeah, yeah, I've got those ones. Oh yeah, you see, you're, you're, you're the culprits. Ones. Oh my and god, then, pick me up from airports. They, you know, exactly. I don't see them again for the rest of the holiday. You know, thanks. Exactly. Pick me up from airport. I call them unpaid Uber drivers, and they do like they deliver your stuff for you. Oh, they terrible. pick, they, they. they oh, no. <laughs> These poor men, and then, <laughs> then you've got the guy who actually gives her sex. You know, the guy oh, like yes. the bad boy who yeah. will come around <laughs> and fuck her. And <laughs> yeah, my god. She's, then she'll go off for dinner with the other guy and then she's got the other guy who she cries on about the bad boy who's going and fucking other guys fu I'm fucking so other laughing girls. so much because this is it, so true it's true and it's fucking terrible <laughs> if, you, if you don't understand the dynamics of, of the reality of, that these really attractive women live in 
So you you don't want to do that to them, you know? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm I'm really actually laughing properly yeah. hard now. Um, I just got to compose myself. Yeah. <laughs> See, men don't have this. They don't have these women that do shit for them. They've got the woman that they love and the woman that they fuck. You know, they've got that, which is a bit more insidious. They'll have the woman, they're like, I love that woman. I love her. And they really care. It's like kind of her like girlfriend and stuff. But then there's this chick that they're fucking on the side. So, you know. Who are you talking about now? Men. The, the, it depends men, what type of man. Uh, depends what type of man. always fucking some, something on the side. Uh, it depends what type of man. Okay, um, I'm not. I, I, the thing is, this is why I really help my students because I know exactly what you're talking about here because I've mm -hmm. done it. And I say to some of my guys, I said, You do know that you are just her handyman. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. like, no, 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 I think she likes me. I'm like, No, she's fucking using you big yeah. time and she's fucking someone else on top of it. Yeah. And I get them to, you know, turn that around and become that attractive guy. I said, like, Okay, you've got time with the girl. Let's utilize that time wisely. Stop fixing her house. You know, stop, um, you know, picking her up, taking her places, dropping her off. But use the time that you have with her to seduce her and to... Because um, this is essentially the friend zone we're talking about now. And I'll be doing another podcast about this, um, another podcast show about it. But it's essentially redating her. So she's... You've gone out with her, now she has to rediscover this other side to you. If you fucked her up for so long being her mm. friend. But, okay, we are digressing. But it's an amazing Very point. Very interesting topic. It is really an interesting topic. Maybe you'd like to come on it with me and Pedro. We're going to do that one. Um, next next uh, component is compliance, I believe. Compliance, yes, yeah. tell me about that. You've got her physical, verbal, and physical. using ways to see where she's on the spectrum of escalation. I love it. Go for it. Yeah, so... Uh, in any situation, whether it's on a date or an interaction, I always, I'm always testing for compliance. You know, if it's on a, in an interaction in the street, I'm going to hold her hand after I shake it for the first time and step in close and see what she does. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to test the verbal compliance, but let me, let me break this down so it's simple to understand. So basically, in any interaction with a girl that you like, you're working on a spectrum of physical escalation towards the end goal, which is sex, if you find her attractive. Compliance, if you have good emotional intelligence, basically allows you to see where you are on that spectrum and to calibrate accordingly. So guys who are clueless will go on a date with a girl and she'll be uber keen. And then they'll be like, no, 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 I'm not that type of guy. I, I want to wait a few dates. And then you have the guy who maybe pushes too hard and he doesn't understand. So it's that fine well, balance. Have ever said, I want to wait a couple of days? I've never had that experience. You've never had that experience. Well, a guy I've saying, I want to wait to... A guy saying to me, I want to wait before having sex with you. I have lots of mates who have, who've really? done that. Really? Yeah. Men are changing. Yeah. Um, I bet they're young guys, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. You are young, by just the way. How old are you? 25. Yeah, just inexperienced guys. But obviously, you know, a lot of the time when you're in an interaction with a girl, whether it's in the day or the club, and things really do progress quickly, mm. people see that and they're like, fuck, magic. You know, it's absolutely crazy. And a lot of the time what they don't realize is that the girl was just willing to do it and they capitalized on the opportunity. They, were, they just had the intelligence to read the signs, which most guys don't. Um, so physical compliance is basically just testing how comfortable she is with my touch to her. Obviously, I'm going to always start from the extremities outwards. Uh, low levels of central touch, hands up the arms, shoulders, back of the hand on the leg. And then obviously the more sensual would be like upper back. Your hip, what is, yeah, what is this called? Waist. waist. Your waist is, a, a female's waist is massively sensual. You're not going to touch that right from the get-go. And what you're seeing is how comfortable she is with that. So if she's very comfortable with you touching her leg, then you can touch on the, on the top of the back and you can move forward, forward, forward. And you're also constantly testing proximity because females are extremely aware of personal space. Mm. They are massively aware of personal space. If a woman is very comfortable with you being very close to her, then it's probably a good sign that you can go and kiss her. Things like that. So I'm always testing that and just seeing, seeing what I can actually get away with. And then if she feels a little uncomfortable, so if she maybe flinches slightly or she moves back, then I'm going to take two steps back and then one step forward and then one step forward and then see, see how comfortable she is. And then, like I said before, that'll give me a good indication of, of where I am on that spectrum of, of physicality. In terms of verbal escalation, that's going from a platonic place to a more sexual place with the you and her dynamic. Um, in saying this, though, 
for the most part, I don't necessarily listen to what women say. I always look at what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I've been on dates with girls and they're like, I never kiss guys on the first date. I never. Oh, it's just yeah. so against my, it's so against my rules. And then they're sitting like basically on top of me, like their faces here. And obviously I'm going to act on what their body is you saying. Do you think guys get caught up with what they're saying too Oh, much? of course, all the time. They take it as gospel truth, everything the girls say. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And it's, it's exactly the wrong thing. It's, it's what to avoid basically. Um, it's not, it's not misogynistic to say, take, don't always take what a girl says seriously. Mm -hmm. Look at what her body says because her body is going to tell you the truth. Yeah. Every She's single time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Investment. That's the third, yeah, the third one. component. Mm. So investment. Making her work. Making her work. Make her work for it. Always, like, always make yeah, it work. Yeah. Like, there's no better gift than you can give a girl than the gift of the chase. Make her work for you, and she'll value you a lot more. So, uh, I'm just getting caught up on this. But basically, there are two reasons that you make a girl invest. The first one is to make her work. You know, it's to make her value you more. So it's the same for women. Women make men work, and the man values her more. If she just gives up, gives it up on the first night. He's, yeah, sometimes it works, but most of the time the guy's like, oh, okay, yeah. I'll move on to the next one now. So it's the same, same rules. Really. Exactly the same mm. rules, just reversed around. It's just guys playing, playing a, a female's game. So making the girl work for you. So this can be verbalized in the things that we spoke about before. Things like push-pull, disqualification, qual qualification, abundancy. challenging, te teasing, having Not an having abundance. Yeah. Exactly. And the important thing to realize is that you must actually live that life, you know, you must live the, the exciting life where you're really driven towards your passions, excuse me, your passions and your goals in life and you set on a path and because you're so focused on that path, you are actually busy. So you can't reply all the time. You, you don't have time to go on, on dates. So that must be something that comes naturally, but that's a topic for a new, a new discussion where you build an attractive lifestyle, but let's get back onto investment. So, Making the girl work for you, um, it's a similar principle, you know, if I give you a suitcase full of money and I say go and buy a car and you write it off the next day, you'll be like, oh, fuck, it was a nice car. However, if you saved every single day for the last four years for that car and you wrote it off, you'll have a borderline emotional breakdown. It's because you've worked for it, because you've placed a lot of physical, social and emotional energy into that thing. You'll value it a lot more. So... Um, yeah. In a conversation, this is basically getting her to speak, getting her to work for you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I've got here from our conversation previously, uh, create a certain level of comfort. Yes, so that is basically the second step to investment, is creating comfort. So what does that mean? Like some guys will be listening to this and just like, I don't know what that means, comfort, like I've got to sit comfortably, what, what does that mean, comfort? Yeah, so... Uh, uh, the way I view comfort is basically making the girl feel comfortable and one way you can do that through conversation is sharing certain facts about you. So letting her know that you're not um, a complete fucking weirdo. Letting her know that you have your life together. Mm. So I often say to guys on the street, put yourselves in the shoes of the girl. You've run up to this girl, she doesn't know who you are. Now think about it from her perspective. Yes, you, if she goes out on a date with you, there's a possibility she could end up on the corner missing a liver you know she needs to know that you're a normal guy she needs to know he definitely that from South Africa <laughs> yeah she needs to know <laughs> she needs to know that you're a normal guy she needs to know that you're possibly a family guy that you have uh, siblings with children that you look after those children that you have a job that you live somewhere that you work somewhere and although that's a boring part of the conversation it'll make her feel comfortable and it'll make her feel more at ease with you Mm. Oh no, um, and especially yeah. when it comes to online dating, I always like, that's when girls are really suspicious, thinking, who is this guy? And I always say, make sure you've got photographs yeah. of you with other people. Yeah. So and doing regular shit, you know? Like, yeah. not just sitting there on your own in a room taking a picture of yourself. Like selfie. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so those are the two things, basically making her work and creating a certain level of comfort by sharing knowledge about you. You know, and it doesn't always have to be very fun and exciting. Obviously, that is good, but it, it, it should just be safe. 
She needs to know that you're a normal, yes. safe Yes, you do need to feel safe, absolutely. Guy. Yeah. Um, can you explain why she needs both value and comfort and not too much or too less of either and you have to get the balance just right? What does that mean? Yeah, so the two components that a girl needs if she wants to sleep with you is value mm -hmm. and comfort. If you're interacting with a girl and you're too dominant, you're too alpha, you are being very, uh, yeah, you're just being very overpowering. It's a bit one dimensional. It's one dimensional. You may have a lot of value in your eyes, but she's not going to feel comfortable with you. Mm. She's not going to feel safe with you. So she's not actually going to want to sleep with you. However, on the other side of the spectrum, if you have too much comfort, then you fall into the friend zone. Unpaid okay, Uber driver potential. Exactly, or the or the food guy. Yeah, one of or them. The food Which guys. one would you rather be, food guy or Uber driver? Shit, I'd rather not be any. Um, I think food guy, because at least you can enjoy it a bit. Yeah, food, food guy, definitely. <laughs> Food Uber driver is like the lowest ranking one of the friend zone, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> or the mover guy. I'd definitely not be the mover guy. The guy who like moves all of her shit for her. But they think, you know, maybe after all that, we can... Yeah. I'll be in her house at least, and we can fuck. Exactly. It's such a bad mentality to have, though, because... That's proper sneaky. It is. So they think they're being the good, nice guy, but actually they're the biggest sneaks. You know what? That, that's <laughs> exactly what I was about to say. You know, you get... You get a few different types of like guys that you can roughly categorize them into. The one is just the the complete narcissistic dark trio bad guy, and girls do love that to some degree. Then you get quite the quite alpha guy. He's also a gentleman, but he's very he's fucking good guy. honest. I put no, good no. guy and bad guy. I put exactly. them, and then you've got the nice guy, and every, he's actually not nice. No, he's you get multiple. Sneaky. You get multiple types of, of nice guys. So you yeah. get the you get the genuine, genuine nice guy who just has no fucking clue, and he really just wants to make her happy, and he wants to be around her, and although he does sort of expect something, it's not like he really does. He's he just genuinely likes her, but he has no clue. Um, and he's coming from a good place. But then you have the asshole nice guy who thinks that if he if he goes and buys her dinner, he thinks if he moves all of her shit in her house, he thinks that if he picks her up from the airport, then she's gonna do something in return. It's like a it's like a negotiating relationship that they have, and that's not what women want. No. It's 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 yeah. it's actually really fucked up. So I think not the the bad nice guys they're the biggest assholes in the world you're right they're the biggest and they're passive assholes. aggressive they hold it all in 100 percent. and yeah. then when she's like thinking this is my friend and she says to him i've met someone yeah they get really nasty they will fuck it up yeah. they will destroy that relationship they'll go on facebook they'll mm. troll they'll like they'll they'll, they'll they'll take on different facebook identities yeah. they'll spread rumors anything yeah it's it's completely fucked like they're the biggest fucking assholes in the world like Stay away from them. I think the guys who are actually honest and can be a little bit rude are much better because at least they make their intentions clear. They're like, look, I think you're really cute. We should go out. And if the girl's like, no, actually, I'm not keen. They're just like, cool, whatever, cheers. Buzz and off. Buzz yeah. off, yeah. And, <laughs> and that may be seen as being a little bit narcissistic um, and selfish at times, but I think it's the opposite because you're making your intentions clear. The girl sees exactly what you yeah, want I what you see that. is what you get i like direct yeah direct is 100 percent. yeah yeah i like direct um false time constraints my favorites yeah that's good for investment false yeah. time constraints so false time for uh, false time constraints can be used with so many things you know the interaction on the streets um, taking a girl out on an instant date. I'm big on instant dates. If you meet a girl on the street, always try and take her on an instant date. Um, but you say I've got limited. The whole point of false time constraint is, look, yeah. you know, shit. I've got to be somewhere. I've got to meet. And uh, the other point you mentioned was mentioning names. This is really important. So, I say to my students, say to the girl, like, oh, shit, I'm on my lunch break, but I've got to meet my friend Lucy in half an hour. Mm. We've only got half an hour for a coffee. There is no Lucy. There is no half an hour restriction. Yeah. But then the girl's more likely to say, oh, okay, half an hour, worst case, he has to buzz off at some point. Yeah, exactly. It's actually, it's if you look at it very technically, and I hate to always look at things technically, but it's it's a disqualification. So it's disqualifying the fact that you could sit there for three hours, which is not what she wants. If you say to her, you know, I have 15 minutes, um, let's go grab a quick coffee. She's like, okay, cool. If shit completely hits the fan, I'm only with him for 15 minutes. 
um, you can stay there for like three hours and then off, like most of the time she won't say like, what happened to your friend? But if she does, you can just say, oh, you know, in a joking way, I just really wanted to meet you and come have a good time. And then if you, if you play it off right and you have enough value in her eyes, then she'll just be like, oh, so funny, so cute. She'll backwards rationalize. Backwards rationalize. <laughs> everything according to, according to how much value she has to you. What is Ford? Yeah. Car giant. Yeah. So it's just something that you can use when you're interacting with a woman um, during the investment phase. And that's... F-O-R-D. Yeah, F-O-R-D. So it's family, occupation, recreation, dreams. So if you cover those four things with a woman during the investment phase for basically her learning about you and you learning about her and cover those topics, you're a lot more likely to create a deep sense of rapport with her. You said something that door-to-door -door salesmen use this. You yes. used to do sales, didn't you? Mm, yeah. So how do they use that? Just so, curious if I ever want to be a door-to-door -door salesman. I think I'd be terrible door-to-door -door yeah. salesman. You learn a lot about human... Um, My brother did it. Yeah. My brother went to America selling books and he said it, it, it like made him. Yeah. It really, it, he became a really successful stock trade, um, stockbroker. Yeah. Everything in life is sales to a certain degree. Yeah, if you want is. to be good at anything, you have to sell. Um, seduction is just basically selling yourself. You know, it's sales with a hard on, as Jazzy yeah. always says. Um, but yeah, door to door salesmen. How do they use family, occupation, recreation, and dreams? I'm yeah. curious. So I was going to say, they, they basically have a limited time. Yeah. So they come up to someone's door. They knock on the door. They've got and minus the... limited time, to be honest. Exactly. The person looks at them and thinks, oh, how do I get rid of this person straight away? Mm. If that person gives them a split chance, though, then the quickest way for that person to trust them is to interact on, with these four, four pillars of knowledge. You know, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. You, you touch can't people show us. on a How really... would you do it? Sorry? How would you do it? Would you show us? Um, can't you have to go back to those days? Yeah, I, <laughs> well, no. you knocked on my door and I opened it. Went, uh, yes, darling. You know, um, I'm in my underwear standing there. <laughs> yes, darling. How can I help you? Got dogs barking in the all, background, was, children screaming. That was a long yes. time ago. Um, obviously, you'd have to make your intention clear, otherwise, she's gonna be like, What the fuck are you doing here? But as soon as you do that, you want to branch away from that, and you can soften the blow by transitioning into these four different categories by first sharing a little bit about yourself so mm -hmm. if if a daughter or, or child runs past or you, or you see a child's toy you can say oh that's really interesting you know my sister's actually got a little child as well she leaves those to toys all over the house and I always step on them and hurt my foot I hate it it's so annoying and then you'd probably go into that and then from that I could branch into certain different things about your family about your occupation about recreation and then touching on more things that are a little bit more deeper like dreams yeah can you talk a little bit about that because you haven't spoken about talking about dreams of girls like is that in the role play part that you were talking um, about no this is just a way to aspirations yeah it's just a way to connect with someone to be honest um dreams there's so many things that you can do with someone with this uh you can go back in time so you enter a much deeper part of their brain where they have to relive their past you can say what well, when you were much younger what did you really want to be when you were older? And then she starts to relive that. And when you go back in time with someone, when those people, when someone's interacting with you and they enter knowledge that was sort of created at a, at a much younger age and they start sharing that with you and they start reliving that experience with you, they start connecting with you on a much deeper level yes. because they subconsciously trick themselves to believe that they've known you for a much longer period of time. So it's in, indirectly as NLP to a certain degree. Yeah, no, no, I use that all the time. Like I get yeah. people to talk about their past. Mm. I also get them to talk about their future because then it becomes a multi-dimensional interaction and people start revealing a lot more about themselves. If yeah. you're just talking about the present, the current, it's one dimensional. Yeah, exactly. Last component. Yes. What is that? Dun, dun, dun. So fun. fun. Fun is the last component. Um, this is not necessarily something you can directly control but you can definitely it's hard. influence is, look, it we spoke about it this is the hardest one because you said being aware of your vibe and i said to you you know that's ambiguous yeah. vibe and vibe. you said something really interesting you said it it means no i said to you it means nothing and you said yes but it means everything at the same time 
Yeah. There's a lot of pressure there. I mean, oh, vibe. Yeah. That's, that's a, a hard fucker. one. That's a it's hard a one to explain, but we'll go into it. Go on, minutes. go for it. This is a really, that's a hard one, so good luck. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Um, so vibe for whoever is listening or watching is basically your vibe, how you feel at the time. So if I come up to you in the street and I'm hungover, I'm tired, and I'm like, oh, hey, you know, I saw you and I just thought you looked really nice. And no, my vibe is going to be very low. Um... However, if I come up to you in the street, I'm like, hey, you know, stop, two minutes. That dress is interesting, you know. I had to come and find out about the girl who's wearing it. Mm. And you come in with a lot more energy. That's basically the difference in vibe, like just giving an example of low vibe or having a, a high level of vibe. And what I was but, saying... No, sorry, go on, please. What I was saying, um, and we'll go into a little bit more depth in this, is that it's just important to be congruent with your vibe at the time, first of all. And it's very important not to get too caught up in it. Because if you get too caught up in your vibe, which is what these old school um, pickup artists pickup artists do, they'll be like, oh, I'm not in the vibe. That's why everyone's I acting don't negatively to me. No, just none of them drink. Yeah. Um, I'm not in my vibe. And it actually acts as a negative feedback loop where the more they think about it, the more it fucks them up. So two things to be aware of is to be congruent with your vibe. So if I came up to you and I was hungover, but I just wanted to say hello, I'm going to say that to you. I'm going to say, you know what, look, I'll be honest with you. I'm hungover. I feel terrible, but I thought, fuck it, I might as well take my chance. As opposed to acting like I'm not, you know, yeah. then there's going to be that level of incongruence. Trying to counteract it, yeah. Exactly. There's going to be that level of incongruence between what I'm saying and my body language. And when there's an incongruence between what you're saying and your body language, whether you're conscious of it or not, you'll think to yourself, there's something about him that I don't like. Yes, and it always reminds me of someone put it as this once, ages ago. They explained it as, you know when you see um, like a puppet show, your kid's puppet show, and you've got that kind of stage and you've got the man behind and he's mm. got the puppets and there's like puppet, they're glove, pu puppet, yeah. glove puppets or something, whatever you call them. And then if you take down the, the kid pulls down the, um, that kind of stage that they have, they just see the man like that, like, ah. Oh, that's what it really, that's how it feels, yeah. you know, I always get that in my head when I feel like I'm, I'm not feeling that they can, they can see it. I'm an imposter right now. I mean, you, you can get that not just from talking to girls. I mean, sometimes I've had to do public speaking and I'm fuck. I had like a busy night or something or I'm not feeling good and I'm trying my best. I'm trying to fight it. I'm trying to fight it and be smiley and high energy and everyone's just like, nah. Yeah, and I, like I, you feel like an imposter. You're like, oh, they can see through it. Yeah. I am that man now with the gloves on and the yeah, puppets exactly. and everyone can, I'm exposed. And I think it's just so much better if you just say, you know what, I feel awful right now, but I'm not going to let that stop me. I mm. had to come over and say that. Yeah. It's genuine. It's actually unapologetic honesty, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. It's the best thing to do. Often what I say to students is, if they feel nervous in a situation, say that to her. Mm. I, I say it's 100% nope. true. I disagree. I never say, never say you're nervous. If a woman knows that you are nervous, see, they're going down that, I call it the Hugh Grant route for weddings mm. and a funeral. Oh, I'm going to be this kind of like stuttering, nervous guy and she's going to take pity on me and she is going to feel sorry for him. It will buy time. If you sound nervous, it will buy you time, but it will not buy you quality time. She's just okay. going to sit there and think, oh, poor thing. You know, let's talk so what do, what do you recommend if a guy goes up and he's genuinely nervous and he can't control himself and he's like sit, standing there Then I would use shaking. practice. I would, okay, first of all, I would, I would use uh, throwaway sets. Go up to girls that he's not interested in. Mm. Just practice, practice, practice. I would make him go and do social snowballing beforehand, talking to everything, talking to the tramp in the street, talking to the b barista, talking to any single person, male or female, so that that person, when he does eventually approach him, just becomes an extension an extension of the first person he spoke to. Yeah. Um, I will never say nervous. I think it's okay if you're with a beginner, a real, real beginner who's very, very nervous, just so he can use it as a practice to gain more time to practice putting, implementing what you've said, yes. But um, when they start getting better, I'll never say... Uh, women see nerves as unattractive. It's not like a man can look at a nervous woman and say that's very cute and they like it. Men actually like it, especially if it's a woman like me who comes across like quite strong and they show this vulnerability. Men love it. They love it even more. But vulnerability on men, not with the approach. Look, I'm not saying it's the end goal. 
by no means would I would I recommend this to people. But I think that if they say it, it like you said, it does buy a little bit of time. It does buy then, time. And then she's like, shit, you know what? Most guys don't have the balls to do this, so they wouldn't na- they would naturally be uh, a little bit nervous. Mm-hmm. I guess it, it's it's not black or white either, you know, because you no, cause, you okay, can say so to someone just to clear up to clarify. So on the seven day mastery program, we work with so many different people in such different stages of game. Some guys have zero experience, some guys have a little bit of experience, some people, some guys have bad, awful experiences. So we do work it out on a very personalized, individual basis. And I know that some of my students that have worked with you, um, especially the beginners, um, when it comes to approach, have said that, that that particular one works because it's got them used to buying time with girls and saying, you know what, it's not such a big deal actually. And then the next girl they speak to, the next girl they don't have to say they're nervous because they're not nervous because they've yeah. done it. Um, but you can use social snowballing also thro- and throwaway sets as we call them. Humor types matching up. Yeah. So, it's a hard one. No one's got my gallo sense of humor. I'm still looking for that. <laughs> so that's that's just something that that comes the more you're in this. So the more women that you interact with, the more you learn what you actually like, you'll be able to spot those a lot quicker when you're interacting with someone. So if I go up to a girl and I say things that are funny to me and she is just dead pans, I know we're probably not going to get along that well. So therefore... Is she that important to you? Uh, yeah, 100%. It is, isn't it? 100%, God, yeah. It is to me. 100%. Because it's not everything. Is, no. It's not the silver bullet. No. I th- like, like I said, because we're dealing or because we're speaking about things in a social context, there's no black or white. It's, it's such a, there's so many different factors to be taken into account because to counter that, I could just say that a guy who has extremely high value in a social situation, everyone will find him funny, even if he's not. Therefore, oh yeah, I've noticed that. Everyone laughing with a popular guy. Exactly. Even when he's not funny, yeah. you know, a, a woman will backwards rationalize good traits onto a guy who could be a piece of shit. Mm. Just if he has high value, then everything he does will be right. He could do five things, four, four of which are bad. But if he does one good thing, then everyone will focus on the good thing. It's exactly the same with the social interaction. So it's all about value, don't. isn't it? You keep going back to that. It's value. It's value. It's always value for a woman to, yeah, for anyone it's true. to be attractive for anyone, male and female. It's value. How much value do you have? You and should always be displaying high value. Always. Yeah. And that should be something that comes naturally the more you develop yourself as a person, the more value and abundance you get with women. Those, those traits of value and abundance will come out naturally. I always say to my students, they're like, oh, just make me confident. I'm like, no, the confidence is a process and it will happen as a result of your results. Exactly. Exactly that. But uh, the building up of value, yes, it's something that it is internal, but it is very much about tweaking, altering your actions, your conversation skills also, uh, the delivery of your conversation. Um, And... As you said at the very beginning, it's a positive feedback loop. It mm. feeds into itself. Yeah. Um, I think that's super interesting what you shared today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. To break it down even further quickly for the guys who are listening to this, if you're ever in an interaction, something I, I'm always conscious of is have I conveyed value to a certain degree? Most of the time that comes naturally now because I've been doing this for so long and I do... Have a, I do have an abundance of women and I've spent a lot of time developing myself in other areas of my life. So that comes across as naturally. But if, you, if you're ever in an interaction, think to yourself, have I conveyed value and has she invested? Those are the two things you need to, you need to worry about because basically that creates value and comfort for the girl. Mm-hmm. Not too much of one. Too much value and you're going to scare the girl. Too much comfort and she's going to view you as a friend. So you need that fine balance like we spoke about. Hit the sweet spot. It exactly. is very much about balance. Yeah. You can. It's like a woman with like her boobs out and her legs on show. Yeah. Get the balance right one or the other. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Les. It's a pleasure as oh, always. God. I love that accent. It's terrible. Um, oh, I really do. Um, it's terrible. Right. I'm composed. So, yeah, check out the website, kezia-noble.com, for more information about working with myself, working with Les, working with the team. Um, you're very good friends of Josie, aren't you, also? Yeah. You too, yeah. 
pair of wrapped scallions, you two. Um, yeah, check it out. All the information is there. Boot Camp 7 Day Mastery Program. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, thank you very much for being on a piece of the Attraction podcast. If you could say goodbye to our audience in Afrikaan. Dot scenes.